Hey guys, how's it going? Onage here. It's been a very long while since I last said that, I know. What we're going to do today is play the career mode of the new F1 2017 game made by Codemasters. And as I said, it's been a very, very long while since I last made, a, made any video really. Um, let alone an F1 video made by Codemasters, like I said. Uh, we're going to pick the McLaren Honda team. More about that a little bit later on as I'm going uh, through all the settings. It's basically a pro career mode because I'm also going to use cockpit cam. Um, but the only difference is that we are doing a 50% race instead of the full 100% races. Um, also no flashbacks, you'll see that in a second anyway. Um, just blathering on there, you'll see it all in a second on your screen. Like I said then, it's been a very long while since I last made a video. It hasn't been, you know, it, it doesn't mean that I've been doing nothing basically. Because uh, I've made the switch from R Factor, if you know, if you followed that a little bit, I did a lot of uh, Formula Sim Racing, doing uh, some simulation racing, very realistic obviously, but now making the change from that platform to iRacing and trying to compete there in the next couple of years as well at the, at the high level. Um, not gonna go further in depth on that, but I've been doing that a lot off camera and uh, trying to prepare myself for possibly a next uh, next season in iRacing where I can maybe participate. Um, like I said though, not gonna go in any further on that, but that is basically the reason why I've been uploading as much. Uh, well, nothing at all to be honest. Um, yeah, it, it hasn't really got anything to do with, uh, with not being busy, because I've been really busy with racing on iRacing just doing it off camera though. Yes, and I respect that. But my client has a championship to contest. So if you want our participation, I'm afraid the concessions are mandatory. Yes, that's fine. Get back to me when you can. Goodbye. No one ever just signs the contract. Anyway, thanks for coming by on such short notice. I just needed to cover a couple of quick things with you before you race. Firstly, as requested, there's a copy of your contract. It's a rolling deal. However, the team reserves right of termination if you fail to meet performance standards. Your second driver for now, but work hard, hit your targets, and I'll be able to sweeten the deal. I'm also looking to get you into some invitational events throughout the season. The experience and exposure from these will be great for your image. Plus, you'll get to drive some nice historic cars. Now then, go get ready for the next session, and good luck. Yeah, before I'm gonna go any further in depth on this video itself, I uh, just would like to apologize as well for the lack of videos. Uh, if you've been really waiting for them, I mean, I, I, I stopped basically with the F1 2016 career mode. I really hope that I can actually finish this season in 2017. I think I can. Um, but yeah, I, I was just busy with iRacing and that was that was really all I was, I was doing in terms of racing. Um, I'm trying to prepare for that, but again, I did that all off camera. Um, now, regarding this video itself, obviously we're starting a career mode. We're going to go, we're gonna go with McLaren Honda on the highest difficulty. Now, I haven't been really following this this the development of this game uh, as much as I did previously because the thing is with F1 games, usually it gets hyped up massively and it's always like, oh, this is new and that is new and this is incredible and whatever. And uh, eventually, when I play it, there are all kind of issues that pop up that that obviously were never spoken of before the release. So, uh, you know, I, I was trying to calm myself down a little bit. Don't be as hyped as uh, maybe some others were. Um, that also means that I haven't seen a lot of videos. So, everything over here was new for me. And it took me a lot of time to actually get used to all of this. Because we have got different units. That It's very complicated, but we have different units that we can choose. Um... Anyway, that will all become a bit more clear, I think, once we get the, the season going. And then, something completely new is the resource system. Ah, you got my message. Perfect. Welcome to Home Away From Home. We get more real-time data from the factory now than ever before. And it all comes through here. So I have to spend more time checking over the reports, and less time hunting you down in the hospitality suite. And to that end, Sorry, just a sec. Yeah, Chris here, is this important? I'm in the middle of something. Ah, oh, okay. Right. Um, well, that makes no sense. Have Sarah reset the simulation and run it again. 
Okay. Sorry about that. As I was saying, we've set up a desk for you at the front here. You can get onto the network from your laptop, so make sure to check the R&D screen regularly. And let us know how you want to use the data that we've collected over the weekend and through the practice programs. Also, bear in mind that the news from the factory won't always be good. Sometimes tests fail, like you've seen just now. And when that happens, we have to divert additional resources to fix it. Say la vie, I'm afraid. Yeah, remember when I talked about the resource points system? This was all new for me. I did not know anything about this. It is really cool though the way they have done it. We'll have a look at the overview soon. Um, but obviously we're racing with McLaren Honda. Now if you follow f button a little bit, you know that McLaren Honda is the... Hmm, how would you call it? It's quite a disastrous team at the moment, let's put it like that. Um, you know, one engine blows up after another, so the main uh, key or the main aspect we're going to look at of the development of the resource uh, points investment is the durability which you can see over here. I immediately looked, it, looked at that because you know that the reliability of the McLaren is poor. Uh, it blows up after driving 5 kilometers for example. Um, obviously maybe th that may be a bit exaggerated but you know what I mean. It blows up very often and um, no way McLaren Honda in real uh, F1 we are gonna have to improve on the reliability so that's immediately immediately what I did secondly the engine from McLaren which is a Honda engine is also quite bad so we're gonna go into that as well um, now before we do that I actually had a look at these diamonds you can see I'm, I'm currently on and when you <coughs> invest in those diamonds there's less of a chance that an update fails and one thing that I wouldn't like at all, as we invest another thousand points in the uh, engine, uh, yeah, in the engine uh, up improvement, the engine, uh, what, what would you call it? I don't know. The engine aspect of the of the resource of the development. Let's put it like that. Um, now I didn't want any updates to fail because that would be a massive dif disappointment, you know. Hey, looks like you've got a bit of rivalry going on out there. This is good. Gets people talking about you. Just make sure you outperform them, okay? For example, for an engine update, you would wait three weeks, for example. And in those three weeks, uh, you wait, you wait, you wait. Then the engine is finally there, the component is finally there, and then it turns out it's a failure, you know, and you cannot use it. I mean, that's the last thing you want. Hi. Just letting you know that we've had the team's expectations through for the upcoming qualifying session. So Alonso is our rival, he is our teammate as well, and the qualifying goal is to qualify in 17 for hire and beat Alonso. The Australian Grand Prix should be getting underway shortly. Now, like I said before, I haven't really looked at many videos of this game. So, again, I was a little bit, uh, yeah, I was a little bit overthrown, a little bit flabbergasted by especially the development part that was added in the game. There are so many options that you can do. However, like I said before, we're racing with McLaren Honda, a team that is, yeah, that has a poor engine that, you know, blows up the whole time. So, there are two main things you want to look at. And that is the engine, that's the first, and the second is obviously the reliability. You want to make the engine last, you don't want it to blow up after 5 laps, you want it to blow up after 50 laps. Well, in an ideal world, you wouldn't want it to blow up uh, at all, but you know, that's pretty tough, because parts simply wear out, that's, the, that's, uh, yeah, that's simply the case. Going on to the driving itself though, this is obviously qualifying 1, and um, you know what? The, again, I didn't see any kind of videos on F1, so I didn't know what to expect from the AI. But in the practice sessions already, I I could see that the AI was quick and very quick. They really were quick and it was really a, a tough challenge to match Alonso actually. In not one practice session did I finish um, above last place. So in every single practice session I finished last. Now. I didn't really drive in the practice session, well I did drive, but only to complete those achievements that you have set by the team, 
before you enter the session. Players or people who play this game will know exactly what I'm on about, but in the practice session you have got certain programs that you should follow. For example, you can simulate the qualifying or you can you have to drive five laps and the tire wear has to be quite okay. And if it is okay, then you earn resource points. And those resource points are again the points that you can invest, as I make a mistake here, my second qualifying run. Those are the resource points that you can invest in developing the car, obviously. Um, now, I'm, I'm, I'm talking a little bit like uh, to, like you are a newbie and you don't know anything about this game. If you do know something about this game, then you'll be like, what is this guy on about? I already know all of this. Um, but for some people, it may be a bit confusing. However, I think it will clear up once the season really gets gets going here. And after three rounds, we'll be, uh, we'll be all, you know, all fairly... Um, yeah, certain or understandable about what's what's going on. So a 25-4 is currently on the table. That is enough for P19 as we're crossing the line with 20 seconds to go in this session. So this will be the very, very last qualifying run that I'm going to uh, get in. Now, P19, no, no, it's not great at all. It's definitely not. And you always want to try to beat your teammate. Now, I know that at this time, roughly this time, Alonso set a 24-9. So he is currently half a second quicker than us. And at this stage, I was like, how the hell am I going to find half a second because the first lap didn't feel that bad now having said that the first sector already two and a half tens up so that is not bad at all but there are still a third two and a half tens that I need to find in order to achieve a 124.9 and actually beat my teammate because again you always want to beat your teammate now like I said before the AI seems to really have good pace Usually you would be able to qualify maybe a top 10 position in, in career mode in a McLaren Honda on F1 2016. In F1 2017, nope, it's a different story. You really have to fight very hard, you have to push very hard in order to, to do well. You have to be clever as well with what you do. And um, it is really exciting actually. Final sector then, penultimate corner, coming onto the last corner. The question is whether we can get into the 24s and actually beat Alonso. I would be incredibly happy if we can do that, but again, the first lap already felt pretty good. Coming across the line, and can we get into the 24s? The answer seems to be yes, because on the display, on the steering wheel, you can see the top left, it says we're over half a second quicker than we were before. And still, it is only enough for P18. And actually, Alonso improved in the last seconds of the, of the qualifying, I reckon, or... I don't know, the last time I saw from Alonso was a 24-9, but somewhere in the session he improved. And the bastard still finished ahead of us in the qualifying. So, we couldn't beat our teammate in the first qualifying session of the season. That says something. And I honestly, I honestly think that lap was quite a nice lap. Having said that as well, I have set up my qualify or, or my car for the race. And you'll see that um, in a second when I'll show you the setup of the car. I think I've gone for a relatively low down for setup. Uh, the reason why I did that, I'll explain it in a second. Hi, guess who? I've seen the team's expectations for the race, so I thought I'd pass them on and wish you luck. Take care. It's out with the old and in with the new here at Albert Park as we usher in what we hope will be a triumphant new era of Formula One racing. For our drivers though, it's very much business as usual, as they look to be first across that line and get their championship off to a winning start. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position, edging out Raikkonen, who'll start P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Hamilton, Daniel Ricciardo, and Massa, Verstappen, Stroll, Ocon, and Sergio Perez, Kvyat, Sainz, Roman Grosjean, and Palmer, Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Fernando Alonso, and a McLaren, Ericsson, and Pascal Wehrlein completes the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Okay, so speaking of the setup, we'll go through that uh, in a second. What I've gone with is relatively low aerodynamics. Four on the front wing, I think, and three on the rear wing. Now, for this track, I believe that is relatively low downforce, and the reason why I did that is I think it will give me a bit of an advantage in the race here, we see the setup. Um, because the McLaren Honda has such a shit engine, it is so slow down the straight, so I'm trying to compensate for that loss of speed down the straight a little bit with, you know, lower aerodynamics. It is still shit, it is still worse compared to the others, but at least it's something. First round of the season though, it's underway. Now, and let's see what kind of start we have got. Look at the left, Alonso. 
uh, as a Bruin start actually boxed down a little bit over here so we're able to get into his slipstream and heading into turn one let's see what the AI does because we know that the AI from F1 2016 is sometimes quite cautious going into the first lap not that cautious going into the first turn though very good to see um, I was really pleasantly surprised with the behavior of the AI so far here they are still a little bit sluggish going into turn three so we make up a few positions coming into uh, P14 and it seems like um, we are settling for P14 at least for the moment with Hockenberg in front we've gone with a one stop starting on the super soft tire we'll be making the switch to the soft tires around lap 13 I reckon um, but for now you know we'll be concentrating on trying to make up a few positions if possible but again like I said before the McLaren Honda is so slow in the straight it is really tough to to gain positions even when you are in the slipstream of another car when you are in draft of, uh, of another car now again what is slipstream well basically right now I'm driving quite close behind Hulkenberg what Hulkenberg is doing is he's basically punching a a wall into the air that's in front of him and um, because of that I have less drag on my car there is less wind being pushed on my car coming from the front because there's a car driving in front of me it's like it's like a wall is driving in front of me and there's no wind that is pointing towards my car that 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 slows the car down because of drag and uh, that's quickly uh, what slipstream is all about again I'm going to to attack this video like someone is watching who has no knowledge at all about uh, this game and, and, and a bit of Formula 1 in, uh, in general but uh, I'll talk a little bit more you know more like a hardcore nerd whatever <laughs> in, the, in the next race already or whatever uh, again it's the first round of the season so it's all a little bit try and uh, trial and error for all of us it's all uh, you know finding a little bit what it's like and uh, then we can uh, build on, on that for the rest of the, of the season so far though pleasantly surprised with the pace lap two of the race and keeping up with Hulkenberg but again you can't really make a move I mean at the bottom right of the, your screen you can see what kind of fuel mixture we're using a high fuel mixture means that you go faster there's more horsepower being being produced by the engine but at the same time it does cost uh, more fuel as well and as you can see we're currently down on fuel so if we were to come across the line right now um, we, we would run out of fuel uh, so we are we're gonna have to do some fuel saving sooner or later in the race and I have some kind of fuel strategy going on in this race as you can see I'm currently in lean mixture mix one which uses um, less fuel but also doesn't produce a lot of horsepower and uh, that means we're a little bit slower down the straight and I use that in the final sector because in the final sector you know there are a lot of corners it's not really there aren't a lot of straights let's put it like that is it there's a yellow flag uh, there's a car on the right who was that Daniel Ricciardo it says uh, on the screen so Ricciardo is the first DNF I think of this race and we climb the position up to P13 um, so again talking about the fuel strategy again going for lean mixture right here so basically in the in the sections where there are a lot of corners I go into lean mixture you don't really need a lot of horsepower there anyway and for most of the straights I use either standard mixture or rich mixture depending on what kind of position I'm in um, but again sooner or later in this race we're gonna have to do some some fuel saving okay now the basic stuff uh, the basic talk let's throw that out of the window and actually focus on this race uh, lap 3 of the race on the minimap you can see that uh, our teammate Alonso is I think in P18 you can see it on the minimap he's got that uh, different colored dot um, so we're like five positions ahead of, uh, of, our, of our teammate which is not bad especially not considering our teammate is Alonso who's uh, a very very strong driver um, but the thing is you know we're keeping up with Hulkenberg we're in a Renault sandwich here basically because Hulkenberg is in front and Palmer is behind who is also driving a Renault obviously so we're driving in a Renault sandwich um, but they are both on the harder compound they're on the soft tire well we are on the super soft tire you can see that in the top left and the softer the compound the faster the compound is the faster the tire is so well in theory we should be faster than Hulkenberg looking at the, the tire compound but obviously our car I don't think it is better than the Renault so our objective obviously for the season driving for McLaren Honda is firstly improve the 
reliability, make sure that the engine doesn't blow up halfway through the race. And secondly, we also mainly need to improve on the engine performances. Um, the McLaren is quite okay in the corners, it's got some good aerodynamics. The main thing that is letting this car down is the engine. And uh, that has to be, or needs to be improved throughout uh, the season. So I reckon that most of our resource points will go into developing the car. That's our first warning of the race for exceeding the track limits. Let's don't do that um, too often, as that can lead to uh, a penalty given by the race steward. So what we're getting here, what, what, what we're doing here basically is sticking with Hulkenberg. That is really good news, actually. Um, P13, you know what? If you compare it to something like F1 2016, where you could win races in a freaking Sauber, or a Renault, I mean. You know, again, the AI is so much harder, and it's, it, it's almost as if you're driving really bad, because you're used to winning races sometimes in a Renault, and now you're driving a McLaren Honda, and you're pushing the shit out of the car, and you're only in P13, you know? It, it can be a little bit... well... There, there, there are two ways of looking at it. One is, uh, you know, you're a bit disappointed. And the second one is, you know, seeing it as a challenge. And I definitely see it as a challenge to improve this car, especially the engine once again. And, um, well, maybe we can uh, start by scoring off some points in uh, the next, well, couple of races, maybe in five races time. I don't know. Um, what is the case usually, though, with the AI in the F1 games is that they are super strong in Australia. And then for the rest of the season they are a little bit worse in terms of outright pace than they were in Australia. I really hope that that is not the case for F1 uh, 2017, uh, but again, we'll discover that as the season uh, goes on. Pretty close by the Hulkenberg here, again having a DRS, so our rear wing is open. That gives us a little bit less drag, but still I can't get close enough, freaking right on the limit there, almost touching the rear of Hulkenberg. Going into turn 3, trying to, to really make a move, but I can't. And, um, Again, I think the engine is, is simply letting us down. Um, we aren't quick enough down the straights, even though, you know, again, I, I went with, I think, quite low downforce around the track like uh, Albert Park. Obviously, I don't know what the AI is running, but I think 4 3 wings is relatively low downforce. Lap 9 of the race, though, we can see some cars exiting the pit lane. That is actually um, Vettel and Hamilton, who are obviously in a much faster car than we are. They have already pitted though, they have uh, gone with uh, new sets of tires and that means that they have fresher tires and they will be quicker than us. Now Hamilton is already in front of us but Vettel came out behind us so it will only be a matter of time before Vettel closes up to us and actually uh, yeah, starts to take us over. Now again the positive thing is that I'm keeping up with Hulkenberg but yeah, the only the only thing to take from that is the DRS, um, because we can't get past, we, 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 we won't gain that position. We never will, unless Hockenberg make makes a mistake, but we're slowing in a, in a straight line even when we have DRS and even when we are in the slipstream, so you know, tough to uh, make a move, obviously. We let uh, Vettel through there quite easily, again, he has gone on uh, fresher tires, so there's no point really in, uh, in battling with him. And look how much he pulls away immediately as well, it's, it's really insane. Uh, one more thing, um, this video is going to be a little bit longer, well quite a fair bit longer I think, compared to the uh, other videos that we'll be having of this career mode. Um, that's because, you know, there was a bit of a, of a, of a long introduction to all of this, um, and for the next couple of videos we won't need that I think. We're about 24 minutes into this video and I can already feel that my voice is starting to struggle, you know, I'm talking a fair bit more than I would usually do uh, without making videos, I guess. Uh, as Grosjean is now behind us and actually going for a move. See, very close to touching the rear. We are pushing the shit out of this car and you get overtaken by Grosjean down the straight because, again, you are so slow down the straights. Doesn't matter if you run Rich Mixer as well. The cars around you are simply faster down the straights. Yeah, you gotta accept that, and you can keep complaining about it, but there's no point really. So, I would, I would, I, you know, I would rather not do it. Palmer is now behind as well. Obviously, we have lost the position to Grosjean, but uh, Palmer is now behind too. And as you can see, lap 11, Grosjean is uh, is is closing the gap to Hulkenberg. He's quite close behind him already. We have lost connection with 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 Hulkenberg. And now again, we're gonna get overtaken down that very same straight by uh, by Palmer. 
Yeah. Well, heartbreaking. Uh, obviously, they are on the soft tire. We are on the super soft. Um, yeah, that means as well that our tires, they are faster at the beginning, but they degrade faster, so they wear faster. And that means that at this stage, the softer tires may be the faster tire um, instead of the uh, super soft. But I think we'll be pitting in lap 13, something like that. Man, I'm really starting to struggle with my voice here. And I need to keep it up for another 10 minutes as well, you know? It's, it's not a nice prospect. Uh. So lap 12 of this race. Again, lap 13 is, is around the lap where the pit window opens. So, you know what? I think we should be pitting in lap 13 because there are quite a few people now who are fast and now Spalmer just overtook us and we are being pressured by Magnussen now from behind, who's also on the soft tire. Um, so it is, um, I think, time for us to switch on to the soft tire as well as soon as possible already. Which uh, should be next lap because we're not doing it this lap as you can see, still continuing on. Um, again, I think DRS on, on Palmer, just about, but you can see just how much he pulls away into the distance. Um, now we hear it for the for, um, from the engineer as well, excuse me, pit window is open, so we'll be most likely pitting uh, this lap. Where is our teammate Alonso? Um, I think you can see him on the minimap. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, what is that? What is that, Magnussen? Magnussen goes through. Verstappen goes through as well. But Magnussen somehow felt the need to make a little bit of contact there when overtaking me. That was a little bit weird. I was a bit shocked by by him doing that. Obviously, I'm not using any flashback, so I would rather lift, give him that position, and be safe rather than you know have an incident and. Uh, and lose a front wing or whatever. So, well, whatever. Playing it safe there, but I don't know what Magnussen really was faking as we entered the pit lane. Speed limit, 16 kilometers an hour. Make sure that you activate the pit limiter on time and you don't speed into the pit lane, otherwise you'll get a penalty, but no problem for us there. We're into the pit lane, switching from the super soft tire to the soft tire. And uh, let's see how that goes. Two seconds, something like that. 2.7, yeah, 2.7 seconds. Not too bad. Going out on track again. Um, you know what, I think we can be relatively happy with the race, how it's going so far. Um, at the end of the stint, we weren't necessarily the fastest of the people around us. You know, we saw us getting overtaken by Palmer, by Magnussen, by Grosjean. Um, they were simply faster at that time. But yeah, again, I really feel like that first stint was the absolute maximum that I could, that I could do. I didn't really make that many mistakes, driving relatively so solid, relatively quick. Um, I was quite happy with the pace at the beginning because I could follow Hulkenberg and use the DRS to my advantage in order to keep up with him. But never could make a move again because of the straight line speed. Um, so switching onto the soft tires now and, and you know going until the end. The main objective here is to beat our teammate Alonso who is staying out another lap. So he hasn't pitted yet, that's why he's ahead of us. Um, but there will be uh, a few people pitting I'm sure and we should be getting a few positions again. And Maybe we can bring out P13, P14. I don't think that would be too bad for the first race of the, race of the season. I really think it would be uh, quite good. Looking on the minimap, Alonso is in the pit lane. So we'll be able to overtake him. We're actually cli climbing two positions. That means we're currently in P16 at the end of lap 15. Opening up lap 16. As you can see on the minimap, nobody is in the pit lane. So uh, let's do a little bit of, uh, of an onboard lap, shall we? Turns 1 and 2, the chicane. Very fast chicane. Try to cut it as much as you can, which... I did quite well there. I actually cut the corner. Um, usually I would be quite strict at corner cutting and that kind of stuff. For this game, I think I'm going to take a little bit more of a, of a lenient approach to that. A little bit more of a calm approach if I cut a corner. Well, okay, so be it. It can happen. Um, and if the game thinks it's worth a penalty, then they... Or it definitely should give me a penalty and uh, I'll be alright with that. Being uh, one thousandth of a second quicker in the first sector compared to our fastest lap, I would say. So, yeah, good consistency as well. Try to, you know, make these soft tires last until the end of the race. We've got another 13 laps to do on this set. But so far, so good. Everything seems to be in control. The driving is, is relatively smooth, I would say, um, which is good for the tires usually. Again, being a tenth up at the end of the second sector on our fastest lap, so not bad at all. As you can see there, through that very fast chicane, I cut at the apex uh, a little bit as well, I think, but the game said, uh, or the game thought it was all right. So, whatever. Montreal is quite a bit of a, of a, you know, quite an easy track to uh, have a few corner cuts here or there, a few track extents as well. So far, we've been uh, only penalized with one warning uh, for track extending, and, and 
that's it. So that was an onboard lap. There's one guy in the pit lane who is actually Grosjean. Now remember Grosjean was ahead of us when we pitted. We're now actually ahead of him again. That's because we did the undercut. Um, while he was out on all tires, we were on fresh tires. That meant that we were faster and we uh, climbed the position because of that. So up to P15. The negative thing is, is that Grosjean is on the, so uh, on the fresher tire now and also on the faster tires. I take down that bollard. Um, so we get another warning for track limits, which is our second warning. Means that we do have to be a little bit careful with that. Lap 18, a few on, uh, other cars exiting the pit lane. We are still in P15 ahead of Grosjean, but honestly, I'm not sure if I can keep this position. Um, because Grosjean, again, he's on the fresher tire and he's on the faster tire. And it won't be easy for us to defend the position once once he gets the RS. Um, you know, again, our engine is not the fastest in, uh, in the straight line. So again, quite happy with the driving. Um, nothing really to you know, comment on. We're quite ahead, or quite a way ahead of Alonso as well. I think that says enough. P15, you know, okay, it's quite alright for McLaren, I guess. At least at this stage, you know. Maybe again we can improve the edge a little bit, make it a little bit faster, and uh, yeah, maybe we can score some points again within a couple of races. Now coming into this fast chicane, there we go. There goes the penalty I said I was talking about. I said that I had to be careful and still I completely bottled it. Um, and you know what, there's a little bit of an excuse for that as well because remember the lap before the lap I received that penalty, as there's a safety car, virtual safety car out because Massa has, uh, has retired. Um, now on the left here, remember I knocked down the board that was standing on the apex of that corner. I always use that bollard as a, as a reference of when to turn into the corner. Now, I took it down, so the next lap I came to that exact same chicane again, to that exact same corner, as it seems like Rojan is going to make a move on us here, isn't he? Yes, he is. I don't even defend, I go to lean mixture, I know what time, you know, what time it is. Um, but again, I, I always use that bollard as a, as a reference, excuse me, of when to turn in. And that bollard was gone, so I was looking for the bollard and obviously it wasn't there, so I turned in too early and rightly received a 3 second penalty. Now, I don't think it will harm us that much, we're currently in P14 with um, Stroll being behind, but hey, 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 what is that? Is that, that, that is another DNF, that is Grosjean who was actually in front of us. Grosjean um, blew up um, his engine probably, or had a gearbox failure, or whatever. He is now also out of the race, and that means P13, but like I said, we have uh, Stroll behind us. He is on fresh tires again, and he is on the ultra soft tire, which is the fastest compound available for this weekend. So, most likely he'll be flying past us as well. There he goes, yeah, again, don't even bother defending it really. I know what time it is, and again, I have a 3 second time penalty that will be added to my finishing time at the end of the race. So, what's the point, you know? What is the point? With 4 laps to go, we are being dropped. To, uh, yeah, to P14. And you know what? Uh, I, I think that is better than where we actually should have finished. Because remember, Ricciardo DNF'd. Grosjean just DNF'd who was driving in front of us. And Massa DNF'd who was also in front of us. So, in theory, um, three drivers were faster than us DNF'd. So, add three positions up to P14. And that means we uh, would be in P17 right now, I think. Make sure that I don't turn in too early that time, luckily. Um, but at this time, you know, I was short shifting. I was saving, as Palmer also seems to have a problem, but he hasn't DNF just yet. Um, I, I, I'm a bit short shifting, you know, trying to save the uh, engine because, again, what is new in this F1 2017 game is the components that actually wear. And F1 car has many components such as the engine, the gearbox, the ERS system that gives a, that is basically an ele electrical battery giving a bit more horse horsepower they th those components they wear out obviously when you when you drive so I was short shifting not using a rich mixture um, at that time you know trying to save the, the, the all of the components that are on this car as much as I could um, but I saw Alonso getting quite close as we are in P13 
So, I reckon... Maybe it was Palm... No, it wasn't Palm who DNF'd. There was another driver at least who DNF'd, so... I, yeah, we gained another position, that's it. Um, but again, I was trying to save the car uh, a little bit here and there, trying to short shift a bit, but Alonso came quite close. He gained like sometimes two to one and a half seconds per lap, which was quite a bit. And remember that we have a three second time penalty, so I do need to make sure that we finish ahead of Alonso by three seconds in order to stay ahead of him uh, at the uh, final result as well. But that doesn't seem to be a problem. The gap was 6.2 starting uh, or at the end of this uh, first sector of this lap, so that is well above three seconds, so you know, we shouldn't be uh, that much that, that worried. And for the final lap, I just wanted to have a little bit of fun, trying to see if I could improve my personal best of uh, 128.2, maybe get into the 27s, that, that's why I was using a higher fuel mixture in the final lap, just for fun, really. I know that it wears the components down a little bit more, but oh well. I was saving the car for four laps before that as well, you know, let's have a little bit of fun in, uh, in the final lap. And take home 13th place in our first race with McLaren on that. Can I improve the fastest lap as well? Yes, I can. I mean, the fastest lap for us, obviously, our personal fastest lap. Not the fastest lap of the race, because that will definitely not belong to us. And Mercedes have pulled off a great victory here today. So, at. How exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? It was a question of right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bunched up. So as I say that, we can see the drivers coming out now to collect their trophies. It's yet more silverware to take back to their base in Brackley after another excellent Grand Prix. And after this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. Lewis Hamilton takes over the lead of the driver's championship after an excellent result. And now I'd like to ask you, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? Well, my driver of the day was Nico Hülkenberg. He did a cracking job moving through the field and just highlighting why he's so highly rated in the paddock. And here's how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Mercedes moved to the top of the table. Well, the positive thing out of that race, well, firstly, we beat our teammate Alonso. MP13 is, I think, more than the maximum. Um, well, it is the maximum that we could get, I think, out of out of the car. Um, so not too bad. Next race, I think, is China, which has one massively long straight. I think that our car will be so slow down there, it won't even be funny. Um, but um, again. You know that this was the absolute maximum i definitely enjoyed this first race though because you really have to race hard for p13 and that is the way it should be in the mclaren honda you you shouldn't be able to pick up points easily because it is simply not quick enough we're simply gonna have to be looking at improving this car over the course of the season and hopefully make it a little bit better than it is right now that's it for me though, luckily the engine didn't blow up in this first race, uh, maybe the game is a little bit unrealistic, because in real life perhaps it would have happened, um, but um, nonetheless, jokes aside, that was it from the first career mode. If you have any tips or, or tricks or whatever, if you want to leave comments uh, in the comment section below, then obviously feel free to do so, and if you want to give any uh, feedback or criticism, then uh, I would appreciate that as well, that as well, as it can uh, help me improve the videos, and that's uh, what I'm after as well. So thanks all for watching, if you have enjoyed the video I would sincerely appreciate a like. That's it for me though, have a nice day, take care of yourselves and goodbye.